Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Special welcome to all of you and to those who are visiting with us this morning. We are so glad to have you in worship. You know we have a few extra family members with us, so special welcome to you. Please be our guest for lunch following worship. We have lunch together every Sunday and would love to have you stay and, and be with us for that. Uh, it's always a, a special day as we gather together. And today we are remembering loved ones. We are celebrating All Saints Day and uh, are so happy to have family members with us and all of us together uh, to remember those who have gone this past year as well as uh, those in our lives who we will always miss. But today we are especially recognizing uh, those you'll, you'll see in the bulletin and others uh, who are gone uh, this year. So it is a very special Sunday for us. We thank all those who been part and will be part of the service today, our choir, uh, David, our uh, elders serving communion. Uh, appreciate everyone uh, for taking part today. It's good to, good to be together. We are thrilled to have uh, Judge Shaw, our uh, general presbyter, and Alan Payne with us this morning as well. They will be meeting with the PNC after worship. Uh, Judd uh, will be uh, talking with them about the process. Alan has agreed to serve as the liaison to the committee, a Presbytery liaison, to answer questions and kind of continue to guide them in this process. So, uh, special welcome to you and, and prayers to continue for the work of our officer nominating committee and our pastor nominating committee. Um, it is Sacrament of Holy Communion today, and we invite all those who confess Jesus as Savior to join us um, freely. You are welcome at this table. I um, want to thank the deacons for a beautiful luncheon last Sunday as we recognized 50-year uh, members. That was such a special occasion, and we appreciate uh, their work in putting that together for us. Also appreciate Bill Simmons and Bev Stein who have uh, worked especially hard to get the newsletter out for us. Uh, so uh, you can look at that at your leisure. And uh, appreciate the work of Christian Ed and uh, we're going to be talking about these bags a little bit later. Any other announcements for us this morning? Right, well welcome. Let us worship God. Thank you. 
Will you join responsively now with me in the call to worship? Our help is in the name of the Lord. In life and in death. Baptized into Christ's death. Come into God's gates with thanksgiving. Because this Sunday is special, I wanted to offer a couple special differences. And because we are remembering loved ones and know that for all of us, that is difficult as well as joyful, I wanted to share with you this reading by Mark DeWolf called a person is a puzzle. A person is a puzzle. Sometimes from the inside, it feels like some pieces are missing. Perhaps one we love is no longer with us. Perhaps one talent we desire eludes us. Perhaps a moment that required grace found us clumsy. Sometimes, from the inside, it feels like some pieces are missing. A person is a puzzle. We are puzzles not only to ourselves, but to each other. 
A puzzle is a mystery we seek to solve. And the mystery is that we are whole even with our missing pieces. Our missing pieces are empty spaces we might long to fill. Empty spaces that make us who we are. The mystery is that we are only what we are, and that what we are is enough. In the gray stillness of this day, into the accepting peace of a still sky, let us offer our failings, our inadequacies into the silence. And let us know that we are accepted by God and by this company exactly as we are. Accepted, missing pieces and all. I'll be reading from the Old Testament, and Reverend Kathy will be reading from the New Testament. Psalm 116, a song of gratitude to God for deliverance from death and for repeated answers to prayer. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you, my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living, I kept my faith, even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O oh Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? This is the reading of God. Thanks be to God. The Lord. Join together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the So as we come to this time of remembering loved ones, you'll see here in the bulletin that we have lost five members or might as well have been members in this year. Uh, Yoshi, Daniel, Kim, Carlin, and Maria. I would like to read their name and as I do, 
I'm going to ask that a family member who may be present come forward and take this small candle here. Light it from this candle and then light one of the large candles. And after that, uh, there will be a chime. And after we've lit those five candles, I will invite others who have lost a loved one this year to come forward and also light a candle uh, using the votives who are, that are up there. So uh, for all of us, I know we have lost loved ones. And let us keep them in our hearts and present in our minds as well as we witness these lights being lit we know that they continue to be lights in our lives. So first of all, Yoshi Sugita, who died on March 9th, 2019. Is there someone here to light Yoshi's candle? Thank you, Dave. Daniel Hickson Barrett, who died April 4th, 2019. We didn't have a way to contact Daniel's siblings. I did call the home where Daniel lived they are remembering him. I invited them to come. But we do remember Daniel today. Thank you, Greg. Kim Thompson died April 19, 2019. Sheila, we're glad to have you with us. Carlin Collins died May 6, And Maria Ransom Gerald, who died September 11th, 2019. And are there others now who have lost a loved one this year who would like to come forward and share their name with us and light a candle? I'm lighting for Mike Morrison, who is out of town, for his mother, Kitty Morrison, for his mother-in-law, Marjorie McIntosh.
light a candle for my sister-in-law, Elaine Hodgkinson. my brother Donald. For a long time friend, Mike Kennedy. For a treasured friend and longtime member of this congregation, Mary Lou Benson Coates. For my friend Haven West, um, who died in a car wreck.
come forward. this cool? This is a gift that you are going to be getting next Sunday from our Christian Education Committee. They have put together bags of fun crafts and things to do during church so you can be learning more about our faith while you are sitting here. And you just saw these candles being lit. These are in memory of people who have died this past year. And we know that some of our folks are sad, especially remembering that. But one of the things we want to remember is that our faith says they haven't really died. They are still alive, and we believe that, and we trust that, and we know that you have to hear that, you have to believe that, to understand that, and to remember that. And sometimes we need help with learning, and hearing, and understanding. And so I know the Christian Education Committee, all of us, want you to learn. We want you to hear about what we're promised in Scripture, in the Bible, and by Jesus. And we want you to take that with you in your life, just like all of us have learned about it and heard about it, and take it with us. And we have books and one another to support us. And we want you to have books and things to do when you're here so that you learn about it, hear about it, and believe that we are loved. We are always loved. We're loved whether we're in this world or in another world, right? We are always loved by God. And we have to learn that. We have to hear it. We have to trust it. That's what faith is. So next Sunday, look at this. Look what's been made for, for you, for our kids. We have a stand here with books. There's crayons and pencils. There are books down there so that when children come to worship with us, they can use these and they can learn and hear about what we believe. Okay? Pretty nice, isn't it? Let's say a prayer together. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you that you always love us. Thank you that you love all those who are hurting today. Thank you that you love all those who are happy and everything in between. And most of all, thank you for loving us. And thank you for books and crayons and pencils, things that we can use to help us learn more about you. Thank you for people who want us to learn and to share that. Be with these children today throughout their week. Thank you for those who teach them, who continue to guide their path. May we all do that together in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. The anthem today is the third movement from a larger work called Luxatana, Our Eternal Life by West Coast composer Martin Lauritsen. 
Um, we'll, th th you could hear the entire work if you would like to Friday evening at First Baptist Church at 7.30 when the university choruses will combine to do it as part of a memorial concert for Dr. Glenn Draper, our long, uh, our long time conductor. We do this movement today because it was one of Kim Thompson's favorites.
hugged him, we said thank you. Three short readings from New Testament passages. The first is from Romans. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. And then from Ephesians. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And finally, from Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the word of the Lord. While many religions and cultures have identified individuals as saints, the Catholic saints are probably best known by us. Well, how does someone become a saint? Well, the process to make someone a saint doesn't usually start until at least five years after their death. And then they have to become a servant of God. In other words, be deemed a virtuous enough person. They have to show proof of a life of heroic virtue. And there has to be two verified miracles or divine events that have no natural or scientific explanation. And finally, there has to be canonization, a ceremony making sainthood official. So we have familiar saints like St. Francis of Assisi, known for his compassion and love of the animal kingdom. And we have St. Christopher, who by carrying people across a dangerous river became the patron saint of, saint of travelers. St. Joan of Arc, saw visions that instructed her to lead an army into war to restore the French throne. She was captured, charged with multiple crimes, and burned at the stake at the ripe old age of 19. 
Today is a day set aside in the church year to remember the saints. It's not just the ones who've been canonized, because today is about all saints' day, not just some saints' day. And to be clear about another Reformation sticking point, Protestants don't have special saints who intercede for us. We don't believe that God listens to them more since their life was better than other Christians. What we celebrate when we celebrate all saints is not the superhuman faith and power of a select few, but is God's ability to use flawed people to do divine things. We celebrate all on whom God has acted in baptism, sealing them with the mark of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate the fact that God creates faith in God's people, and those people through ordinary acts of love bring the kingdom of God to earth. We celebrate that we have in all who've gone before us a great cloud of witnesses, and that the faithful departed are as much a body of the Christ as we are. It is quite a thing that we are connected to so many, so many stories, so much divine love. Especially in this day and age of alienation and trying to find community and belonging, we might think that the basis of our being connected to each other is determined by having a theology or similar political beliefs, denominational affiliation, or Facebook groups in common. But none of that is what connects us to the body of Christ. What connects us to the body of Christ is not our piety or good works or theological beliefs, God, a God who gathers up all of God's children into the church eternal. So today we remember all the deeply faithful and deeply flawed saints of God's church through whom the glory of God has been revealed, is being revealed, and will be revealed. We remember Mary Magdalene and Peter the fisherman and all the glorious disciples, all with fears and doubts and acts of betrayal, who then became towers of faith and martyrs for our Lord. We remember Mother Teresa, who loved the poorest of the poor, seeing Jesus in them, while fighting dark nights of feeling God's absence. We remember Nelson Mandela, who after 27 years in jail, chose to forgive. We remember Yoshi, and Daniel, and Kim, and Carlin, and Maria. Today we thank God for gathering so many into the church eternal, some of whom still light our own paths. O oh, blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle, they in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. 
Alleluia. Alleluia. Some of us are here today to honor a loved one who has died this past year. Your hearts are heavy with the loss of someone dear. Many of us have our own beloved dead to remember this day. People who we'd frankly rather have in this room. In this room as a living person and not as a lighted candle on this first Sunday of November. We'd rather be standing behind them in line for communion than adding them to the litany of saints. But they are here, just as God is here in this place. They live on with Christ, and they live on in us. Whether we lit a candle or not, those loved ones we remember, our saints, will continue to be a light in our lives and in the world. Amen. Amen. As we recognize being in the company of so many, such a great cloud of witnesses, it is truly a celebration that we share today in this sacrament of Holy Communion. For we remember that Jesus has gone before us, that death is no longer the last word, and we remember that sacrifice and the gift of new life that we receive as we partake Holy Communion. So I invite you, as we come to celebrate this sacrament, to remember the words that Jesus shared with us, who on the night he was betrayed took bread and broke it, saying, this bread is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so remembering me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And friends, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death, and we look toward our partaking of this meal with him in his glory. I invite you to come forward. We'll be partaking by intention. Take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup and uh, return to your seat, if you will. And I'll ask our elders this morning to come help us and the choir to come first.
For your sacrifice, Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for all that you endured on our behalf. Thank you for conquering death once and for all. Thank you for the promise of life, not only in the next world, but in this one. Thank you. We pray for Anne, for Karen, Sarah, Betty, others among our church family who need your special touch today. God, we pray that you will touch our world where war and poverty, where prejudice is still alive and well and going on. God, we know that you hear the cries of your people. We ask that you will continue to be attentive. And Lord, we ask now that you will fold us in your arms, that you will hold us together as one, as we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We continue to celebrate our giving as a congregation with our stewardship minutes. I want to invite now Betty Whitaker to come up and share with us about St. Matthew's Shelter as we prepare to give our offerings. Thank you. I think most of you know that we have a men's night shelter uh, in the basement of our church. 
and uh, it is managed by the community kitchen. So um, anybody that wants to volunteer and help us, we'd be love for you to come. We have now um, got a mission statement and a vision statement that we're going to um, present to the community kitchen and so that we can all work together much better. And I would love to show the shelter to anyone. I'll be glad to open it up at any time and show it to you. Thank you. Let us now give back to God a portion of all that we have received with our offering. even in the midst of tears and sadness, you are our light and our salvation, and we know that you wipe away our tears. Help us continue to look for all of the ways that you give to us. Thank you for the gifts given today, for Jesus' sake. Amen.
story I'd like to share with you. It's about a little wave bobbling along in the ocean, having a grand old time. He's enjoying the wind and the fresh air until he notices the other waves in front of him crashing against the shore. Oh no, this is terrible, the wave says. Look what's going to happen to me. Then along comes another wave. It sees the first wave looking grim. And it says to him, why do you look so sad? The first wave says, you don't understand. We're all going to crash. All of us waves are going to be nothing. Isn't it terrible? The second wave says, no, you don't understand. You're not a wave. You're part of the ocean. You're not a wave. You're part of the ocean. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ our Lord, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, all, now and forever. Amen.